the first question is, is going to be, um, what, what are the reasons people attempt suicide? Um, well, I think there's a lot of different reasons and a lot of different factors. Um, you know, a couple are that maybe students or people might be um, suffering from, you know, extreme depression, or sometimes they feel hopeless, um, and sometimes people feel like they can't get out of something. Um, and so there's a lot of different reasons. Um, and there's uh, for, we do a lot of deering to sort of have the discussion around suicide and suicide prevention. Um, so it's still the leading, uh, the second leading cause of death between ages 15 and 22. So that covers all high school age. Um, and in Maine, we tend to have a higher rate to do a lot of different factors of resources and access to weapons. Um, but a lot of the reasons might include just like that hopeless feeling, not being able to feel like there is a way out, um, and um, you know, sort of dealing with a lot on their plate. Um, but there's also things that we can do that we'll talk about through the interview that to prevent that. Oh, what about you, Miss 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 Do you want me to take the second question? No, like uh, the same question, but you can just paraphrase something on it. Yeah, okay. So um, I think it kind of relates to your second question, too, though. Uh, yeah, what size of our science can predict suicidal behavior? Yeah. yeah, so I think, like Mr. Carroll was saying, that it's never one thing. Um, sometimes we want to find one reason why someone is suicidal, but it's usually a combination of things. Mm -hmm. And when we teach the health classes, we we sort of um, teach a mnemonic that's called FACT. And so um, kind of different categories of symptoms and signs. So the F stands for feeling. So it could be ho feeling hopeless or worthless or just feeling really stuck. Um, and then often the A stands for action so, or events. So sometimes there are events that happen in somebody's life, like a loss. Um, and that can be a loss from a death. It can be a loss from something that was important to you. Um, it can even be that you've always seen yourself as a really strong student and you're struggling in school. Um, so there can be a number of things that are events or losses that can be warning signs for, for folks. Um, and changes in behavior can be concerning, that's the C. And so that can be, a, you know, someone who used to always play soccer is no longer playing anymore. Somebody who isn't sleeping well and used to, someone whose grades have changed, all of those things if they're not typical for that person, can be concerning. And then the T is for threat. Sometimes people will make comments that will say, I don't feel like it's, um, it's not worth living, or what's the point, or even I'm thinking about doing this to myself. So if any of those things are showing up, those are things to be paying attention to and, and concerned about. And now uh, we have a third question too, and the third question is, what can you do to prevent people from committing suicide? Yeah, so um, certainly getting people help. Um, we have a, a crisis hotline in Portland, and it's 774-HELP. We're always driving that number home, and that's someone that you can call 24-7. They're always open, and it's a caring, listening ear, and they can also advise you, because sometimes we're not in school, right? or there's holidays, or there's weekends, there's the summer, so that's a good resource to have, 774 help, and then they might send somebody out to check in with the person. Um, over and over when we talk about the Lifelines classes and going into the health classes is, what we don't want is, um, remember when I talked about the numbers? We don't want people to just not share things, so if like we say to the students, like if you're hearing this, like some of the threats that Ms. Mixday said, or people are talking about it, or sometimes teachers are concerned because they're writing about something, it's really important to let a professional know, so that's why we're here. We also have trained staff to engage with students and talk about that. I mean, the really thing is to sort of not hold that in or feel like it's um, something you can take on because it might be a bigger issue and you might not know what's going on with that person. Um, so it's really important to access help. And different things, there. so there could be counseling, there could be um, you know, some family support to put in place, 
Um, there could be maybe some activities or something that we can do, you know, with um, a student's schedule or their grades or getting more help because they're feeling down. Um, there's lots of little things and then also professional help that really works with people that might have signs of depression or anxiety or um, being able to work with their family. Um, but the biggest thing is, is if people are hearing this or if students are hearing this, people need to um, let somebody know that can help them. Um, Ms. Vistel, do you have something to paraphrase about what I said? Um, no, I think that that's, I mean, the, the main pieces are how to, um, how to make sure, you're not holding that information for a couple of different reasons. One is because other people might be more able to support them, and also it's a lot to hold on your own. So even when we train the students, the, the purpose to let students know what warning signs are are not to make them feel like they have to become social workers, but just so they know what to be aware of so that they can pass those concerns on to other folks. Because it's a lot to hold on your own. For the, for the questions I chose is uh, what are the impacts of suicide in the family? So impacts on family and friends it, are pretty intense sometimes, right? It's a loss like um, death in general is is really difficult and um, grief can be a long road and sometimes when the death is by suicide it's more complicated because um, a lot of times we we will ask ourselves over and over like what could I have done how could I have been supportive um, could I have changed the outcome of this and so it's really important to make sure friends and family get a lot of support because um, it's no one's fault that these things happen, but there are things that resonate with us that are hard and we need some extra help to try to figure out why someone we cared about made a choice that feels really overwhelming and, and hurtful and confusing. So. Um, and um, do you have any personal experience with suicide? Uh, unfortunately, yes. I think our school has um, had to manage um, several deaths, both by suicide and for other reasons. Um, and and it's complicated. And you're always trying to figure out how to how to make sure we do prevention in our schools so that we can be as supportive as possible and um, try to intervene in many ways as possible. And um, what would you say to a student or a person that's thinking about suicide? Um, I think it's important to know that, that life um, can get better, um, that uh, there is help out there to reassure them. Um, and so sometimes, you know, we would look at some community support too. Um, but just to reassure that, you know, maybe that student or someone might be stuck right now doesn't always have to be that way. Um, and to like, you know, say that there is hope and that things through time can get better. Because a lot of times, like I said before, sometimes people, you've heard the term hopelessness or feeling like there's no hope, um, or things like um, folks might be stuck and not be able to think it can get better. Um, but through support or making some adjustments or putting some extra services in place, it does get better. There's a myth out there that if someone's suicidal, they're always gonna feel that way, and that's not true. Um, because there's lots of things that we can do to put them up in, into place to support them. Uh, what do you think would be helpful for a student to say to a friend or a family member to keep them safe from suicide? Um, sort of the same along the lines is, you know, certainly um, to reiterate to take the statement serious, right? So some there's, um, you know, uh, a lot of research out there that. Um, you're sort of the first line of defense, and so that's why we go into classes and talk to students about um, warning signs or things that people can do. Um, listening, you know, is, is really important because if someone's, you know, expressing these feelings and you're concerned, you don't want to dismiss it and say, oh, things will just be better, you just got to get, you know. Um, so there's things to, to not say and there's things that maybe you could say. So. Um, you know, what not to say are things like, oh, you'll get over him or her if it's a breakup, um, or, you know, just feel just feel like, you know, um, how would people feel if you did this to yourself? Mm -hmm. But what's supportive is, you know, here, I'm really, I'm, I'm here for you, I care about you, um, hey, let's talk about this, 
hey, let's go talk to someone about this. And if you're really, really worried and that person is not willing to access help or support, um, we encourage people to make that sort of hard call to call crisis themselves, or maybe even the police to sort of say what they'll do um, is a, a wellness check. Um, because if they're making the statements, maybe on social media or in writing, or they're talking about this with you, but they don't access help, we would still encourage you to um, put something in place for them. Um, have you ever had a student who got in depression because they couldn't have a date? Talking Not specifically, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, you know, I think that's it, it could trigger something, right? Like if someone was feeling rejected or sad about that or was really looking forward to, you know, um, going to a dance or something along those lines, my guess is that if they used, you know, said they were going to hurt themselves or thinking about suicide, that means there's probably something else going on with that person, right? Yeah. So we always say in the classes, it's like, it's, it's okay to maybe feel sad, maybe down or depressed, or feeling, you know, even what they call rejected, but it's a whole other sort of thing to sort of say, you know, I'm thinking about ending my life, or I'm really contemplating suicide. That's a whole other level that we need to take serious. Um, last question, what's going to be your best advice for people who will be watching this video? Yeah, so I think um, one of the things that we sort of say in the health class is if you remember nothing else of what we've been talking about is that um, there's some simple steps to be supportive and do an intervention. So one of the first steps is just show you care, and Mr. Carroll referenced that, just really being able to be there for a friend and let them know that you're noticing things don't seem like they're going well, that you're paying attention and uh, they matter enough to you that you're seeing that something is different. Um, and then the next step is asking the question about whether or not they're suicidal. And I think um, sometimes people feel like you're not supposed to ask that because you're going to put the idea in their head. But if you're asking respectfully, sometimes it just opens a window for someone to say, like, yeah, actually, I do think about that sometimes. And maybe they'll say, but I'm never going to do that. But Or maybe they're going to say, yeah, I just sometimes wonder if things aren't going to get better. So to not be afraid to really ask where they are, which, you know, why we practice that in the health classes, because sometimes it can feel hard or awkward to say it. Um, and then the last step is figuring out how to get them some help and not to have that all on you all the time, and um, but to figure out how to get some support. And some people will even say, well, this kid says this all the time, right? They're always sort of making a comment. And I would say, if someone is always kind of making comments and you've decided that like, they don't really mean it, that it's probably worth touching base with someone about how they're doing and getting some help for them because they need to probably find a different way to manage their feelings that are feeling overwhelming, that that's what they're putting out a lot of the time. Right. Okay, thank you guys for having us here. I think also the video is just yeah. to create an awareness, right? Because yeah. sometimes people, um, to expand on this mistake, saying, you know, some people don't want to talk about this and just the topic of suicide in general. Um, there's a great organization called NAMI and it's uh, a national organization's um, National Alliance for the Mentally Ill. Um, and so they do like fundraisers, they do walks to raise awareness. Um, there's a whole walk, a national walk that's called Art of the Darkness to sort of bring some awareness. Um, too light, so people sort of just you know shove this under the rug and don't talk about it. So there's some national movements too, and so there's a local walk, and then there's one nationally that trend that goes around to different cities. A couple years ago, it was in Boston, and people walk overnight to sort of create awareness and raise funds for suicide and suicide prevention and awareness. Why, why did y'all decide to do this topic? Oh, actually, we just decided to do this topic. Because we, we really saw, saw the topic was really weird. Because when we started doing the Dapson project, teacher put some like some kind of topics on the on the board, and we saw like uh, suicide was between 15 to 24 years old people like young age killing themselves. So it was like why 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 that's happening? So that's why we got like uh, curious. We put up curious and curiosity on this, and then we tried to understand why was that. And we got some like uh, some sort of uh, awareness like. Uh, Kids, they are trying to kill themselves. Maybe it's just because of the day, or probably the parent. Some parents they might say tell their their child like you are useless. So yeah. that's like kind of you know guarantee them that 
you need to press it. And so that's why that's that's I, I really that's one of the reasons. So yeah. that's why we try to get it in suicide. Absolutely. And also suicide is, uh, is one of the is one of the cause cause of of death uh, during this 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 young generation they become themselves. I think I think that's one of the reason to choose this or uh, to let to let our generation know uh, how they can help how they can get help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's important because it's preventable. Right, so it's a leading cause of death, but we can do something about it if we work together on it. And uh, we got to say thank you for you to help to help us on this because um, this video probably is going to be a lot of people they're going to watch it, and so we don't have nothing to like say or give, but we only got to say thank you. That's all. Yeah. Thanks for taking the time. Yeah. Seven seven four for help. There you go. <laughs>